Hey everybody, Anger Poncho here. Welcome back to Horizons... No. Final Fantasy X. Uh, oh boy. This is... <laughs> this is our first post... This is our truly post-game episodes. This is where we've... We've beaten Sin. The world has been saved. And then time rewound... Backwards to the point where we had just not beaten Sin. Just right before that. And, um... This is like the alternate timeline, like, this is one of the 6 million, 14,000, whatever other timelines that Doctor Strange saw where they didn't win. This is one of those. Uh, and this is also another episode I'm recording from a hotel. Today's August 20th. Uh, we haven't gotten our house yet. We, we've made an offer, we finished the negotiations, like, that's all done. We, like, toured the house and told them what stuff we wanted them to fix. Like, hey, this thing leaks, hey, this thing needs to be replaced, that kind of thing. And they did all that. So, and then Saturday, we're going to go and look at the house and take out one last walkthrough to see if they fix the things we asked for. And if that goes well, which it should, they gave us receipts so we know things got fixed. Um, we get to close on the house a week from tomorrow, and I'm so excited. Uh, we're going to own the house. We're going to be moving in next weekend, calling all our friends and being like, hey, help me move this couch, that kind of thing. Whew! It's very exciting. All right, so we just used a return sphere with Yuna to zip her all the way back to this other part of her grid because uh, from here it's convenient for her to break into Titus's grid. And I decided that was the best choice for Yuna because for Yuna we really want two things. If her strength goes up, her Aeons become more powerful, which is awesome. So you can see here, Strength 23, right? And then here's, I like Bahama, he's my favorite. Strength 88. Okay, so 23, 88. Cool. Now let's level up Yuna's Strength a little more and see how much stronger Bahama gets. Right? So we'll give Yuna plus 4 Strength, so now she's got 27 Strength. Go back to the main menu. Bahama now has 95. His, her, his strength went up by 7 points for Yuna's 4. So basically he's kicking ass. And that goes for all the Aeons. I just used Bahamut as an example. If you can't tell, this is post-commentary because... Oh my god. It's taken me like 3 days to play through all the stuff I had to do. All the grinding and capturing I had to do. To get to the point where I'm ready to actually bring you guys back into the episode. But anyway... Oh, it's, I've had so much... I've had free time because... What else am I going to do in a hotel? I mean, it's just have sex with the wife and play Final Fantasy. So needless to say, I've been exclusively playing Final Fantasy for like two weeks now. <laughs> Megan can hear me in the bathroom and she's laughing at me. She knows it's a joke. We're very happy. Thanks for asking. So, um, this is actually after hours and hours of grinding. And, uh, it's, oh boy. So let me tell you what's, what's been going on in Final Fantasy while you were away. Uh... So much capturing. So, so much capturing. Uh, basically, in order to unlock the final optional boss in the game, and I'm not sure if it's actually the hardest boss, but it's the hardest to unlock, uh, we have to capture 10 of every single monster in the game. That imposes a few restrictions. One, we have to go back to all those areas, get lots and lots and lots of random encounters, until we encounter 10 of every enemy, and we have to kill those enemies with a physical attack by a character wielding a capture weapon. That naturally lends itself to uh, the boys, boys, boys doing all the work, because Yuna, Lulu, and Riku don't do a ton of physical damage, uh, so killing things with their capture weapons is going to be difficult. So basically it's been Titus and, and Waka, uh, because fuck Kamari, uh, doing all of the capturing. And so they have the most experience from all of this grinding. Because, I mean, you think about killing ten of every enemy in the game, plus a couple extras that you run into in mixed encounters, and you got a lot of sphere levels to go around. This isn't even all of them. This goes for like, there's like 30 minutes of leveling. I have no idea how much of this I'm going to want to show you guys, if or I'm just going to want to do a, a catch up at the end, but we'll see. There's a lot of decisions to make for where you want to go on the sphere grid and what you want to do. At this point, I've decided I'm turning Yuna around. Maybe I want to come down here and use a level 4 lock and unlock that node. And then go into the area that's uh, being blocked there. We're going to think, okay, well, where else am I going to use these locks? Where else am I going to take Yuna? 
like, is she going to come back this way? You know, do I want this ability, that ability? And right now, it, we are pinched on level four key spheres. That's that's our def that starts holding us back because they're hard to find. And while capturing in the Omega ruins, which by the way we're no longer scared of those, the boss there will probably still kill us. But the monsters there aren't as aren't as dangerous as we thought. Um, at least not anymore. Uh, got so many sphere levels and, and went through a bunch of random treasure chests and found two more level four spheres. So we've been able to unlock a few things here. But as you can see, we only have one here, and then I think I found two more. So we still need like four or five more, and you can get them from some enemies, but it's sort of complicated. I'll explain it when it comes up. Basically. Let me finish what I was saying about Yuna's sphere grade. Her power goes up, her aeons get stronger. We also want her to learn useful abilities. So in this case, she's moving into Riku's grid, because over there on the right side of that next circular area for Riku is full life. Uh, the reanimate spell that reanimates someone with all of their HP rather than half. So that's pretty useful. It takes two level four spheres in order to get in there, though. So, you know, you do the math. Is two more than one? Yes. But good news is, by the time all this grinding is done, we have almost 1.5 million gil. So we're going to be able to actually bribe certain enemies to give us level four key spheres. Pretty cool. I feel like there's so much I have to catch you guys up on. Oh, the other thing is that. There's a lot of different monsters you can fight in the monster arena. You can fight any of the monsters that appear in the game, except for bosses. So you can fight, you know, every random encounter that you would run into in the world. They're all available. And you basically pay the arena, uh, I don't know what you call them, the ringmaster there, for the privilege of fighting those monsters. And the more powerful the monster, the more expensive they are, that sort of thing. But, uh... There are also special monsters in the arena besides the ones that you run into around the world. And those monsters come into, I guess, three categories. You have area conquests, species conquests, and custom. So the area conquest monsters are a series of, of super bosses that the arena patron creates when you've captured at least one of every fiend in a given area. So like every fiend in Beaconel Island, every fiend in Mount Gagazet, every fiend in the Calm Lands, that kind of thing. Those are the those are the area captures. You also have the species conquests. So when you've captured one of every drake, one of every flying one-eyed bat, one of every lizard monster, you get to fight a species creation which is essentially a super strong version of that monster. Uh, so, you know, like the world's strongest flying one-eyed bat. Uh, and essentially you get to fight the ultimate pinnacle of that archetype, as it were. Uh, and then the third category is custom, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's just super tough monsters that he created. I'm not sure exactly what the criteria are for them to appear, but one of them is the final, final, final super boss called Nemesis. And in order for him to unlock, you have to capture 10 of every fiend. So, including like palette swaps, every fiend. And then you also have to defeat every single special monster in the arena. All the arena creations, all the species creations, and all the custom monsters prior to Nemesis. So at some point here, I'm going to cut away because I've, I'm coming to the conclusion now that I don't need 30 minutes to catch up on this, and this goes on for another 20 minutes. Maybe I'll speed it up. Maybe I'll just make 30 minutes of leveling up fit in however long I talk. That sounds like a good idea. But here at the end, I'm going to show you guys that I have captured all those monsters, and that you get tons and tons and tons of rewards from the arena patron. I don't know what he's actually called. The, the arena master? The arena ringleader? The, the proprietor. <laughs> um, you get tons of rewards from him. Capturing 10 of different things, clearing out different areas, blah, blah, blah. Pretty much every time he makes a new monster for you, be it a species, area, or custom creation, he gives you a bunch of some rare item. Like, he gave us the 99 mega potions 
when we cleared the calm lands or something like that. He gives you like 99 mega elixirs, 99 dark matters, 99 chocobo feathers and phoenix downs and whatever else. So it's all, our inventory is just full to bursting of items. And uh, we've got all the capturing done. So I'm going to come back into live commentary after this. And our next goal is going to be to figure out with how much we've grinded, I'll show you the, the final version of everybody's sphere grid of where we're at at the moment up to real time. How, how many of the custom creations can we actually beat? Because we have to be able to beat all of them in order to unlock Nemesis. And then we're going to think, how many of the Dark Aeons can we beat? And I'm going to show you guys the best known trick for getting lots and lots of experience. Assuming we can actually pull it off, so fingers crossed. But, uh, all right, let's switch back to live commentary. Fresh poncho. Ripe, freshly picked, freshly squeezed poncho. Sun ripened poncho. Like, sun dried poncho. All right, just fucking watch it. All right, live poncho back. Oh my gosh. It's been a minute. I'll tell you that, it's been a minute since we played this game. Let me show you where everybody ended up on the sphere grid, huh? So Titus, oh, Titus has gone on a grand merry adventure. So his grid starts down here and heads up to the left over there. He finished that entire grid with quick hit that ability down at the bottom left. And then we brought him back over here, ran up a little into Waka's, crossed over from Waka's uh, into Oren's, zipped back up here and crossed back into Waka's. And basically, uh, he's been getting lots of strength upgrades, accuracy, some cool abilities, and basically is an all-around useful character right now. He has Armor Break, he has Hastiga, he's got pretty good strength, 110. Uh, so yeah, it's going well. He's above Orin and Waka because they uh, haven't gotten their full levels yet. Because I ran out of <laughs> strength spheres, or power spheres. We'll be remedying that in this episode. And uh, he also has 8600 HP, which is pretty nice. Not, not at the HP max of 9,999, but it's pretty good. And... Who's next? Yuna. Oh, Yuna. Um, Yuna has been around, too. So she started on her grid back here. Went all the way down and around to um, the very bottom down here where her grid ends with Holy. And then we actually zipped her back up to take her up into a little bit of Titus's grid get a uh, Hastiga and she actually backed up again to go get auto life and then we zipped her all the way back down to the bottom of her grid where she broke over into Riku's and is now heading into uh, Lulu's grid actually picking up more magic upgrades eventually when we get more level 4 key spheres we're going to have to teleport her back around or just run back here to grab full life but that won't be a big uh, time loss it's no big deal sphere levels will soon become uh, pretty much trivial Oren. All right, Oren. Oh, boy. So all of Oren's grid is done. And then he's been wandering around. And it looks like he's almost completed Waka's grid, too. So been pretty focused there. Waka, interestingly, has kind of done the opposite. They started in his grid and then moved on to Oren's grid. So they're almost, like, mirroring each other. Lulu hasn't even finished her own grid. It's a little sad. She kind of fell off. She kind of falls off towards the end of the game anyway. And it's fine. I do want her to make her way up to Flare eventually, but, you know. Kimari, oh god. Look at Kimari's path th through this grid. Look at this absolute mess. Wandering around in the middle. Dipping down to go grab the magic spells. Jumping over into Riku's to get Steel and Use. And then breaking into <laughs> Yuna's and heading all the way down to Holy. And that's where he'll probably be done. Uh, Riku is only done Riku's grid. She's gone almost nowhere. And she can be pretty useful. Her mix abilities can do some pretty busted things. So we'll probably be leveling everybody up a bit more, you know. I haven't decided how far I really want to take it in terms of total, like, power level, but we'll see. The four characters that I've really leveled up the most are Titus, Yuna, Oren, and Waka. Uh, those four are going to... Oh, low battery. Where's the... Where's the charger, my Mahoozel? Cable. Come here, you. Yeah. Got it. So, um, we're going to be using those characters. 
as we try and fight some of these arena monsters. So I'm gonna hop back here. Actually, you know, we just saved. It's fine. All right, so let's start fighting these these uh, custom creations, right? I guess. Where do we want to start? Well, let's start from the beginning, I guess. The uh, the very first area creation is a big bird. Bless you, Megan. So I think, and at this point, it doesn't matter how we kill things. Oh, which means that everyone has the wrong weapons equipped. Damn. All right, well, hasty got to start. Yuna, I believe, has her celestial weapon equipped, so let's just see how uh, scary this guy is. Give him a little holy. 13 grand, all right. It's gonna take us a while to beat some of the monsters if that's the hot most damage we can do. Uh, weapon. What does he have equipped? Yeah, Beastmaster. Okay, switch back to Masamune. And then, uh, I guess... Uh, armor Break? 13 grand, okay. How tough is this guy gonna be? Oh! Oh, we one-shot you now. That's bad. Alright, that's... That's bad. Oh, we do I need to buy more Phoenix Downs. I keep forgetting I'm supposed to buy Phoenix Downs. Alright, so let's see here. It only has been armor broke. Let's, uh, let's slice and dice. I guess I should have equipped my damage limit breaking weapon first. So it's just gonna do 60 grand. Very nice. Oren, you wanna... Can I shooting star him out? I mean, probably not. Ooh, that is 40,000 damage. That's pretty good. Now, thankfully, we do have auto life uh, on Yuna, so we will be able to uh, recover from people constantly getting knocked out. But I'm going to need Yuna to get some turns for that to actually matter. So we'll start by auto lifing herself. Again, as the White Mage, make sure you stay alive first. Oh, oh and look at this. Phoenix down. But she's got auto med too. All right, white magic. Let's try and slow the boss because that would be easier than miss. Just miss? Okay. I don't know, I don't know what to do with that. Orin, get an auto life. So when they die, they automatically come back. Isn't it amazing? Let's try again. Miss? I don't. I don't know what that means. It didn't say he's immune. It just seems like I'm. It's fucking up. No. Auto life Titus too. <coughs> Pardon me. We're gonna struggle to keep our um our haste going, unfortunately. I need to switch Titus's weapon, I keep forgetting. Alright. We're probably gonna get one shot by almost everything, but I suppose it's worth it to try and put protect just to see. Thirty-seven thousand. Oh, he's charging. He's a charging his lasers. All right, switch your damn weapon, Titus. Get collared, bulk. Thirty-nine thousand. We'll fill up your uh, overdrive meter pretty quick with triple overdrive too. Well, let's just keep casting protectin and shell on everybody. Work our way through the whole party. That overdrive is going to be pretty nice when we finally uh, get to use it again. Overkill! Oh, damn! <coughs> I thought it was going to be tougher than that. But we got him. Very cool. Drop some dark matter and a shimmering blade. All right. Well, hell. On to uh, the Marlboro Menace. We're probably going to immediately get bad breath, right? Yeah, this is not going to... Oh, ambushed! But Orin has uh, the priority to go first. That's very good. Also, I did not buy Phoenix Downs because I'm an idiot. Um, what do I want to do with this? Um, let's try and triple foul him. 
Oh, he's immune to all three. Putrid breath. I wonder if that's even bit worse than bad breath. <laughs> so everyone's silence, darkness, poison, and confused. Which usually just means you lose unless somebody has the ability to uh, break out of their confusion. Oh! Lauren's down. Oh! Chow time! Um nom 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 nom. Oh, that looks bad. Little shop! Little shop of horrors! Oh, get back up, Yuna. You're fine. Oh! Blip. Mega gastric juice. Blip. Well. Good news is you don't technically get a game over from losing those fights. It does cost us 6,000 gil or whatever. Alright, buy items. Buy Phoenix Downs. They're only 100 gold. I mean, come on. Oh, this is a this is a this is a crazy item down here. The clear sphere, those are unlocked once you're halfway through your capturing. Once you have five of every enemy, and they do exactly what they say that it clears away a node on the sphere grid to make an empty space. Why would you want to do that? Well, because you can put in custom nodes that are always a plus four bonus, so you can clear away the nodes that are only plus one, plus twos, and plus threes, and add in plus four bonuses. It's very much worth it. That's how you get your characters to be super maxed out. Alright, you know what? We should have plenty of all of these just to make sure our auto med characters can do their thing well, you know? Okay, let me see here. First off, we can heal. And then... <coughs> we should start looking at our ultimate armors, right? So I have some... Uh, all right, items are not sorted. Bing, there we go. So I have, I think for most people, I have an empty Tetra one that I got from just random drops. So like what four abilities do we want Titus to have? If we look down here, I don't have one for Yuna, but I have a zombie proof and a death proof ring. And the Phoenix Rings, Stone Proof, Auto Phoenix, HP plus 30. Auto Phoenix is pretty easy to get though, because you just need Phoenix Downs to enchant that, I believe. Zombie Proof plus three other things might be useful, I don't know. Well, this only has wards, so we're going to replace those for, for Aurum. And then. Let's see for. Yeah, for Waka, I have the Tetra Arm Guard too. So, you know what? Let's equip Tetra Arm Guard onto Waka and see what kind of stuff we want to put on here. We want to give one person a ribbon, which basically makes them immune to status ailments. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, that can be pretty damn useful. And I'm thinking maybe I want it on Yuna? It's kind of hard to say. Because, like, Ribbon plus Auto Phoenix, or even, like, uh, Auto Med, for example, can basically make Yuna into the ultimate support character where she's not going to get statused and she'll automatically use things. Now, the problem is, with Auto Med, it only heals... Auto Phoenix will use Phoenix Downs on KO'd allies. Auto Med will only use your remedies on yourself. So if you want that to go off, you have to have it on uh, everybody's armor. But still, seems like a good way to beat the Marlboro, right? Maybe we don't even need all this other stuff. Maybe we just put, we just buy a bunch of remedies and put auto med on some armor. The other thing I want to figure out is where can I go to buy those blank Tetra pieces? Because I don't want the ones with plus 10% HP. Because if we're not breaking the HP limit, we're going to be at the maximum. And that means plus 10 is going to do literally nothing. I'm going to talk to Rin again. I think I already checked if he wasn't selling them, but... May I help? I'm trying to remember here. So he does sell... Remedies. That's one of the things we want to buy. We have lots of, lots of money, so it's really not that big of a deal. Can I get like 10 at a time? Is there a... Nope. Right. I'm gonna need like 60 some. Oh wait, pushing up gives you 10. All right. Well, there we go. 
Uh, yeah, 67,000 gil, whatever. We're gonna make some very, very good armor with them, so. Thank you. Your patronage is very much appreciated. Oh, you're welcome. welcome. Oh, you know what I can do? <laughs> I can sell these fucking capture weapons. <laughs> I am never gonna be using those again. Let's see. We got some empty things. SOS protect, don't care. Don't care. As you can see, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, items we can sell. Death strike for Yuna, no thanks. I'll keep the malleable ones just in case we want a weapon that's not the celestial weapon for some reason. Although I don't know if that would ever be the case. I suppose we'll see. I gotta keep death proof. That just seems really useful. I, I don't know. I don't know about bless ring. I can deal with that. Zombie touch, SOS overdrive, piercing. Yeah. No. No. Yeah, as you can see. It's uh, pretty quick to move through a lot of these and get rid of ones we don't need. And this is why we have uh, so many... Uh, this is why we have so much money. It's from selling all the weapons we get that the uh, monsters drop. Magic counter counter attack. <laughs> Poison strike. No thanks. Ooh, berserk proof. That could be useful. Oh no, it's not confused proof. It's berserk proof. I always forget. There's a tetra for waka pretty good. Again, death touch on a weapon for, uh, well, magic plus 10. We might use that for something. Regen bangle. SOS regen. <laughs> Magical rave. Half MP costs for her. No, I don't think she needs that. Flexible arm. Zombie proof shield. All right. All right. Thank you. No. Aerial branch office. Thanks. Thanks. So I think his tetras all have the plus 10. And he sells the basic weapons too with plus 10 of whatever attribute is good for that character. Plus, these are actually cheaper because they have piercing on one of the slots. Having an empty slot is considered more valuable than having a slot dedicated to piercing. Which is pretty funny. Oh Thank my god. Kimari is still wielding his fucking taming weapon. Famlusa! Hey! <laughs> it's Amore! Alright, let's go down here and sell those ones we're not going to use now. The capture weapons and all that crap. Just make, make space in my inventory, dude. Thank you. Your patronage is very much appreciated. So now the question becomes, where are the blank tetras that I can buy? I'll look that up. So, do you guys remember once Owaka's brother? You can find him in the southernmost part of Monclonia Woods and li living up to Owaka's uh, heritage. Uh, Owaka's, hey, open for business. Once is the best store. We actually get a discount on some stuff from him, I think, too. Or do we? Oh. Anyway, um, if we look in his armor hey, selection, no, not. I walk. Oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, he sells blank stuff. So, literally four empty slots, make make your own flavor type stuff. So, very cool. They're a hundred grand each, but you know, worth it. All right. So we already have a Tetra shield. We want a Tetra ring for Yuna. Uh, equip. Sure. Um. Oh my God. So much HP gone. Um. I don't know if we have one for Waka or not. We're gonna want one for Arin though. Let me check and see who else we have them for. So I got a Tetra for Tidus. Just go ahead and equip them so we know we have them. Yeah, we already have one for Waka. Alright, cool. So, boom, we have our blank slates. And we can start making ourselves some sick custom armor. So really it comes down to what do we want to put on uh, all of these things. It's kind of... Oh gosh, it's kind of hard to choose. Like, there obviously there's some stuff that's just busted that's really, really good. Like, ribbon making you basically immune to status elements is really great. But we're only going to be able to make one ribbon armor because dark matter is super hard to get. 
takes forever to get 99 of them, but you get 99 for beating the, uh, for capturing all the monsters. So, useful. That's where all of these weird random items are, you know, purifying salt and stars and whatever else. Yeah, auto, auto, auto phoenix costs mega phoenixes, so that's a little rare, but remedies we can just buy. Um, oh, it's, it's just kind of tough. And then you have abilities, like these auto abilities up here. So basically, these will automatically cast the relevant thing at the beginning of the battle. So you can see here, we only have enough chocobo wings to make one set of uh, auto haste armor. So we gotta kind of pick our pick and choose our battles here. So oh, it's kind of tough actually. <laughs> and then there's a bunch of other uh, proofs that are useful, like stone proof, uh, confused proof. Unfortunately, for confused stuff, we need to get musk. And I forget who exactly I'm supposed to bribe or steal from in order to get musk. But it would be nice to get some... It would be nice to get some musk. The question now is, who are we going to give the ribbon to? I feel like protecting our... Uh, our white mage is the most important, right? Like, that seems like the way we want to go. Just because, just like I've said, if you're the white mage, your job is to keep the party alive. If your armor keeps you alive, you can better do your job. Hmm. Your it's a tough one, that's for sure. This is the kind of thing where if I screw it up, I'm gonna want to reload my last save, you know? So. Here we go. Let's go back to the calm lands, run over to the monster arena, and uh, see what's what. Maybe I'll want to go out and capture something to fight something that gives me musk. Because whatever it is that drops musk, it's going to be in the monster arena. And let's get to look up what I need to fight in order to steal some. And we can make confused proof armor if we really want. But I think just having one character that's immune to confusion will be good enough to protect the rest of the party. The other thing I wonder is what what does it take to put stone proof on something? Petrify grenades. Okay. We have enough. Oh, we have enough for two. That's perfect. So we can put stone proof on two of them. Uh, two or three, I guess. If we're going to put Orin in there, too. I don't really know if we want Orin in there anymore, because I think... I honestly think Waka is going to become stronger than Orin before too long here. And uh, Waka's overdrives are better than Orin's because your overdrive does as much damage as your attack for stuff like Titus's and Waka's multi-hit overdrives. But the difference is that hitting multiple times means you get to break the damage limit multiple times. Whereas Orin's overdrive might do like 60,000 damage, but it's only one hit. Whereas if Waka's does 40, but he gets to hit 12 times, that's obviously it's way more. So anyway, huh. all right, you know what? Can we save here? And then we'll just go for it. I'll just make whatever armor feels like it's, it's correct, you know? We'll do the best we can. All right, Tetra Ring, Yuna, you're getting the ribbon, girl. Love it. <laughs> it's not even on the list anymore. <laughs> All right. Um, break the MP limit. That seems a little excessive. Do we want Auto Phoenix on Yuna's um, one? That that seems pretty good. I gotta say. Automatically use Phoenix down in KO characters. Yeah, I mean, that seems pretty strong for a white mage's armor to have. I don't know if we need auto med because she's basically immune to saddle, status ailments now, so who cares? HP and MP don't matter. Defense and stuff don't really matter much. Do we want to give her the auto haste? I don't know. Auto regen? Again, I don't know. Maybe we just want to keep her alive. So we give her auto-protect, auto-shell, and 
uh, Ribbon and Auto Phoenix. So basically, she doesn't get status, she starts the battle off with higher defenses, and she can automatically raise other people. That seems like a good mix of things for a white mage to have, right? Do we want anything else up here, like death proof or something? But I don't know. I just don't know. Also, we can steal these gems from uh, monsters in the monster arena too, so if we want to make a set of armor that makes her immune to all four elements, we can do that too. Some monsters that will be pretty useful against. Alright, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's just do it. What actually, where do these take? Lunar Curtains it takes 8 for an SOS shell. This one takes uh, 80. Yeah, I see. Hmm. Yes, considering she's got Alma Phoenix on, we're going to want her to be not dying. Alright, boom. Auto Shell, Auto Protect, the Holy Ring. She just can't be touched. Alright, and then... These are not sorted again. There we go. <laughs> that makes a little more sense. Let's take a look at what we want to put on Titus's. So I think we want Stone Proof, because getting petrified is a great way to get KO'd and knocked out of a battle. And it, removing you, it's basically as bad as death. Oh, we can only make one death proof armor? Oh boy. Oh boy. Alright, um... It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Maybe we, Titus gets auto-haste? Makes sense for Titus to be the quick one. If he's going, getting extra turns and going first, he can uh, haste Diga the team, too. It's kind of, kind of interesting. He can get Auto Phoenix as well, just to make sure that he always gets up, you know, when she gets knocked down. That seems good. Two characters with Auto Phoenix, we can only be killed if we're party wiped by one attack. Because if he's using single targets, whoever's still alive will just raise the other, right? So that seems good. Yeah, okay. Auto Phoenix. And then... Do we want him to have Auto Med, too? Hmm. Auto Med and Stone Proof, maybe? Just so, like, status ailments are just not a thing that we care about at all. <laughs> Yeah, we're stoneproof. Okay. And then... Do we want to give him auto-haste? Do we want him to be the auto-haster? I think we do. Boom. Alright. Now let's make something nice for Waka. So we want him to be stoneproof as well. He's, as you can see, we're starting to use up some of our more valuable options here. He doesn't need to have Auto Phoenix, but Auto Med seems good. What order did I put them on in <laughs> on Titus's? I want them to match. Phoenix Med Stoneproof Haste. All right. We're not going to give him Auto Phoenix, but do you think Auto Med is good? Top shape. Alright. Stone Proof seems good. Very nice. Um, I wish we could give it more strength, but that only goes on weapons, I guess, huh? Hmm. Don't need auto potion, more MP doesn't matter, HP doesn't matter. And I guess we could do more defense, but that doesn't seem super useful. Um, maybe some SOS abilities or other good proofs. I think you'll still auto med yourself even if you're confused. So that's that's a good one. Could make him eat a couple elements, but it doesn't seem super, super valuable, to be honest. 
I don't know what else we want for Waka. Maybe we'll just leave it there for now and add on uh, other stuff once we get more items. Is everybody equipped? Alright, let's switch the formation so it's actually correct. And then I'm gonna give Titus back the right sword before I start fighting. Coward Bulg. Yeah. Alright, now we can try again against that monster Marlboro. The Marlboro Menace. Alright, Yuna's immune. Uh oh. Oh. They don't automatically fix themselves when they're confused. But look at how many turns we have! Oh. Oh my. Alright. Okay, so. First things first. Start fixing up the party. Asuna tied us. So he's not confused and dark and everything else. Titus is going to haste the rest of the party. <laughs> Waka, stop it! Go ahead and fix up Waka too. Alright, boom. And then... Well, let's just see how much damage we do. 7,000. Oof. Alright. Let's, um... Let's full break his ass. Might have been immune to some of those, but not others. It's hard to tell, actually. So... Do I want to protect people? I wonder if that's the way to go here. Now let's protect Titus. And protect Waka, too. It's only 7,000. Hmm. <laughs> Waka, your head's not attached properly. Eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand. Come on, show me a critical. Show me a critical, Titus. Thirty-seven thousand. Very nice. Mega gastric juice. Oh, that's still one shot him. But look, Auto Phoenix. He's fine, ladies and gentlemen. He's okay. And uh, Yuna can actually haste Giga him if we want, but I don't know if there's that much of a point. I guess we want him to fire off his uh, ultimate, or his overdrive, as quickly as possible, so we can use it again. Oh, only 11,000. Oh, it's because he's not a full HP. Silly me. Waka? It's time for attack reels. Oh, Waka's only at half HP, too. Man, I'm gonna miss out on so much damage from not having my party healed properly. Let's see how much this does. Oh, well, just, you know, like 150,000 or so. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. Alright, just, um... We don't have any X potions? All we have is Mega Elixirs? Seriously? I guess I'll just use an Elixir on Titus. I don't really care. I don't know how much damage is Titus going to be doing. 43,000! Yeah, that's a little better. Oh boy, more bad breath. And everybody's confused. So we'll Asuna, whoever goes next, which is Titus. Titus use a remedy on Waka. <laughs> Waka's turn. Uh, does a little damage. 3,000. That's just sad, man. 35,000, alright. Let's go ahead and heal Waka. I love that all the cure spells cost the same amount now, it's so funny. Ba -ding! The overdrive meters fill so quickly now. 
Let's see how much damage Yuna can do with Holy. We need her to learn Flare and Ultima. 34,000, alright. 16,000, you know, you know, he's still in there. The overdrives quickly become the premier way to deal damage to these bosses. Multi-hit attacks like this are the way to go. Hmm. I want to do here. Put regen on the party so that they uh, always have their HP full. Overkilled! Oh, Marlboro. So sad. <laughs> Mana tonics. Alright. Now we gotta fight. Let's fight the next one. Katos. So Katos is pretty cool. He's the ultimate... He's, an, he's, an, he's a really good ogre. He's not the ultimate ogre. But what we can do is... We want to extract a, uh, strength on him. Because he drops like 40... Spears when you do that. Oh! And he's very strong! But look at this. With Auto Phoenix and lots of Phoenix Downs, it's just so easy. In fact, it's so easy, I'm just going to Grand Summon <laughs> Anima. No, let's Grand Summon Bahamut. See how much this uh, Overdrive does. I want those 40 power spheres so that I can up finish upgrading Waka and uh, Orin and their spear grids. It feels weird walking around with 30 spear levels that I haven't used. <laughs> you scared boy. Of course, Bahamut's Overdrive can break the damage limit from the minute you get him. Sixty thousand. Oh, that's underwhelming. Eh. I punch you. Oh, and he's dead. Oh. So, Bahamut kind of... Bahamut's not as good as Anima. Hate to say it, but An the fact that Anima's uh, overdrive is a multi-hit move just makes it so, so much stronger. <laughs> it's like, get up, Waka! <laughs> oh, I can see how this is going to go. There's a lot of being revived. There's no point in setting up haste if we're going to be constantly getting knocked to zero and losing them. I love that. His basic attack it doesn't break the damage limit, but his counter attack does. What sense does that make? <laughs> wow! 14,000. I suppose in theory we could, uh... Actually live through that attack if we had higher uh, defense. Oh, yeah, see? With her shell, she would have lived that if she had more HP. So one of the things you can do to make these fights easier is come into them with your overdrives full. You can just fight random monsters in the monster arena to get your... to just to, just to deal piles of damage and refill your overdrive meter. That's really all it takes. <laughs> ah, fuck. Phoenix down. <laughs> so great. Alright, um, we're gonna have Yuna heal Titus so that his overdrive attack will do the most damage possible. Mm -hmm. Also kind of neat that Titus learns new overdrives by using his overdrive. Maybe we should armor break this guy. We're not doing that much damage to him. Huh, it's only get one counter attack, loser. It's just like, I have died a hundred deaths. <laughs> it's 
beautiful. Uh, Waka's not got his HP full. Um, yeah, just, just drink an elixir. I don't care. Alright, and then... Let's see here. <laughs> Quick hit. Yeah, I don't know if that's really what Yuno wants to be doing right now. Let me see if I can... What do I want to do here? You can teach Yuna some status inflicting attacks too. That would be pretty good to have, huh? Anyway, we'll just holy him. I'm gonna have Titus armor break him so that Waka's uh, ultimate will do more damage, hopefully. Even on enemies that aren't armored, it lowers their defense, so, you know, worth it. Honestly, you could just go straight for full break. Considering, uh... We're gonna be able to use the save sphere in between fights anyway, so... Using up a lot of mana doesn't really matter. Alright, Waka. Show us those attack rules, buddy. Oh, Only four hits instead of twelve. What a shame. Oh, that was weak. That was weak, Waka. Disappointed in you. The good news is, as long as we don't run out of Phoenix Downs, it looks like we literally can't lose this fight. Casting Holy for one mana just feels so broken. But in these, these fights in the Monster Arena are literally that tough. Let's see here. Let's keep quick hitting him. Overkilled! Nice! So we should be getting a bunch of uh, Power Spheres now, right? Yeah, some Sphere levels, that doesn't matter. Two. Two? Why didn't he drop... I thought he dropped... Oh, maybe I have to use the Distill item instead. Hmm. Hmm. Let's try that, I guess. And then, um... Alright, let me... Yuna's overdrive actually goes up just from it being her turn. No, I, um, haste. <laughs> haste Yuna. We want her to get more turns. So her overdrive meter will start filling up faster. And then I'm just gonna extract... I'm gonna use the item on Karas, and then I'm gonna... Overdrive summon Anima and just probably win in one attack, so... You know, get in there. Ah! That poor Dingo! He never stood a chance! He's dropping Power Spheres too! Alright. Uh, oh no, I don't want to fight right now. I gotta, I gotta touch the Save Sphere to heal. Alright. We do have to fight all of these monsters in order to unlock Nemesis, so... We're gonna fight Kodos again. It's like, put up your nukes. All right, so, item. Uh, we want to use the power distiller. Power. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I was like, ah, fuck. All right, and then uh, let's bring out Anima. Anima is super strong. Even with all the upgrades I put into Bahamut, Anima is still stronger. Honestly, think I might uh, just put the rest of the upgrades if I get extras. Those are going to Anima. Be my pain, Anima. Also, how sick is the is the overdrive animation for Oblivion? 
Honestly, this is the way that we might be defeating some of the stronger monsters in this arena. Just because the amount of damage this attack does is ludicrous. It breaks the damage limit and it has a huge number of multi-hits. Place your bets in the comments. Will we kill Kodos in one hit? I'm pretty sure they'll do it. <laughs> so that did like a million damage. No exaggeration, it might have literally been a million. Holy shit. <laughs> Okay, there we go. 40 Power Spheres. That's what we wanted. Very nice. Alright, so now I can actually finish moving people around the Sphere Grid. Finally, right? Been waiting so long! Walk of Strength going up by 4. We're gonna need to move, uh... Lulu around a bit too, I believe. We we're waiting on power spheres for her. Although I suppose there's not really much rush. Although if she gets up to flare, we'll just use a black magic sphere in order to get Yuna to learn it. It'll be easier than moving Yuna all the way over there. Although, if Yuna finishes uh, Lulu's whole grid, it won't really matter. Do I want to use a level 3 lock for whatever this is? Agility plus two? No. You can see there's a lot of power spheres needed to move through the end of Arn's grid, so that's why we were waiting. Oh, well, Walker just got 12 more strength. That's pretty good. Is he uh, stronger than Arn now? Oh, it's very close. But you know what? We can keep moving Arn too. Unfortunately, Arn is going to sort of fall out of favor with uh, with us just because he doesn't have a multi-hit overdrive. And it really does come down to who's got the best overdrives eventually. It's one of the reasons that uh, Lu uh, Lulu is not super great later in the game is that although her overdrive is multi-hit, it's a pain in the ass to use trying to spin the joystick. And it reduces the amount of damage that each hit does, which is very lame. So it's not a true multi-hit. Yeah, with that ability uh, with Kodos, we can use those those different distiller items, and actually, uh, Kodos can drop any kind of item we want. Any of those spheres, at least. Power, speed, what are the other ones? Uh, mana and ability. So if we ever need more spheres, we'll just fight Kodos, and we'll get 40 of whatever sphere we need. So I'll probably be referencing that uh, later on as we're going through the sphere grid, because... Oh, there's a setup we can do where we fight Don Tonberry, one of the Tonberry-type enemies. That's a custom enemy here in the uh, monster arena. And there's a, a trick you can use with him to get three characters in your party, or really, I guess, as many as you want if you're willing to switch them in and out, you know, 99 sphere levels. And it's uh, pretty damn cool. We may run out of time in this episode and do it next time, but these uh, next couple episodes are going to be literally just like boss rush mode. Like, how many of these different custom beasts can uh, we beat in one fight, you know? Oh, look at that. Titus got some sphere levels too, didn't he? Almost forgot that we're still fighting with different enemies and such. And every time uh, they get stronger, it makes it that much easier to do the next fight. Alright. We'll go ahead and use up the rest of Lulu's levels, because, you know, we're here. Might as well. I do really like Lulu. I'd like to do a run, a playthrough, where I use 
Lulu, uh, Kimari, and Riku as the main party. I think that would be interesting. Alright, I'm gonna try and get back up here to flare, so we'll just scoot do doodle doo around here. Um, no, that's not where I wanted to go. It's there, yeah. <laughs> Increasing our magic stats. Magic defense. We're only like 10 levels away from from Flare up there. It's pretty good. We need more level 4 key spheres. Once I figure out how to get those, I'll let you know. Alright, boom. I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with this. So, uh, alright, yeah, next time in Final Fantasy X, we're going to fight more of these awesome custom creations and I'll show you how to do the Don Tomberry trick that lets you get 99 sphere levels. <laughs>